Now we strongly advise you at home not to rush this process like Craig is forced to do today. <laughs> you can very easily tear your foam and although you can patch it and repair it, it's just a test skin. You, you don't want to have to repair it. Now this is the first time you've had the skin back on since you uh, put your eyebrows in place. Mm -hmm. right. How do you like your placement? Any distortion? They're looking okay. Um, I feel like they're just a, a hair on the low side of the whole eye mechanism. Um, but that's, we'll take a look at that and see how that uh, if that is the case, then then what I would do is the um, to rectify that is that the um, the eyes are attached to that little cross beam post, and I would add a couple of washers in there to braise it up. So. What was your build time on the original imp animatronic? Two weeks. There you go, Red. Two weeks, five thousand and twelve dollars was my budget. <laughs> That's uh, one million dollars in two thousand sixteen money. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know? <laughs> no. Even back then, that was a pittance to create. That was that was nothing. Yeah. Character. Well, it was it was for a movie that it, the total movie's budget was ninety four thousand dollars. And it too was shot in a period of two weeks. So, and one of those days that we shot, if you look at the making of commentary of Sorority Babes of the Slimeball Ballorama, one of those days was on for the 4th of July. So we all worked on the 4th of July one time. So, which believe it or not happens more often or not than in Hollywood. <laughs> so. If you're, if you're thinking about going in the industry, the holidays mean nothing. <laughs> so, so I remember on Ghostbusters, I was working on Christmas Day, punching hair into one of the arms that come in. There's a scene in Ghostbusters where one of these arms come out of a chair and traps Sigourney Weaver. And the one with all the, the big hairy arms and big claws. Well, that's what I was doing on Christmas Day, was punching all that hair in on that lovely... December of 1983 or 84, somewhere back then. But yeah, that's, but you know what? I was so excited about being in the industry at that time. I still am, but, and uh, don't, don't get me wrong. Um, and also that everybody knew that Ghostbusters was just like gonna be this cool movie. So it was kind of one of those things where we were all very excited to be, to be uh, involved with it no matter what, so. By show of hands, how many of you out there would consider working on Ghostbusters on Christmas Day an actual Christmas miracle? That would be the best Christmas ever. Right? I mean, yeah. it, it, was, it was an awesome movie. And we all knew that it was going to be, a, it was, you know, we knew that we had a special movie on our hands, so. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull these up here so I can get a good, good view of these, uh, the brows here, and I'm going to put some prosade on it. On this side, and hopefully I won't drip any on the eye because I wouldn't like that. So 
I'm just going to glue everything down and hope that it works really well the first time. <laughs> I, I laugh because that would be a first. Um, but I just want to get everything glued down so that we can cover everything that we need to cover for today. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to put a little more glue on right on the bridge of his nose so I can tuck this guy in. And I got a little bit of gunk there. That's not what I really wanted. We'll take that off there a little bit. I'm just worried that if I stop the test every single thing as they go, that we will run out of time way before we get done with this project. And there's still a couple more things I want to show you guys. So, As Craig said, this test fit it can take days to get exactly right. And yeah. we don't have days. We have 30 minutes. That's right. All righty. So... I'm going to move my way down to the eyelids now. All right. Also, um, I'm here. I have not yet bothered to put a layer of shellac or anything on these eyelids, on the brass pieces, and I would normally want to seal these with some shellac or, or fingernail polish or something like that, just so that the brass wasn't completely exposed um, on the on the foam latex skin. Um, but also, this is the test skin, so I'm not too worried about it. And I'm going to put a little bit on the edge of this eyelid because I want to glue that back together, actually. Just pinch in that corner of his eye together, right there. And... Can you elaborate on that? Um, why you'd want to protect the uh, brass um, in that way? Brass um, and foam latex don't mix well. Brass has a tendency to make foam latex um, wear out faster. Uh, so, um, if I was I was going to do this, have this head for a, a long term or a longer term, um, I would want to seal that up a little bit so that it's it's. It's not going to be a end-all thing. It's it's still going to happen. I mean, well, foam latex doesn't last forever anyway. But but at the same time, um, and I'll put a little bit here in the corner because I want to I want to close this. Um, it's just if you wanted something to last a little bit longer, that would certainly be the the way to, to go about doing it. And there's a little tiny tear here in the lid. So I'll kind of get that guy glued in there. Come back to pinch that back together in a little bit. Okay. So 
And I'm going to reach in here and glue this bottom area around the eyes and also unfold my little lip mechanism here too. Let's see if this guy is doing the same thing. Yes, he is. All right. Okay. Maybe a better way to go in through this way. Yep, thinking so. That's half the half the trick here is figuring out which way to which is the best way to get these things to glue in. So alright, so here we go. Kind of covering everything up. Not too happy about that enormous gap right there. Let's see if I can get that. What are you going to use to take the skin back off? What's your solvent of choice? I'm using this stuff called Detach Hall Adhesive Remover. And it is actually made for, for, uh, for removing uh, prosade. There we go, Detach Hall. And I got this uh, at Berman's Makeup Supply or Berman Makeup Industries at the same place I bought the prosade. So there we go. Jeffrey Warren Park suggests isopropyl alcohol. Yeah. Would you use isopropyl as well for this? Um, yeah, I, th I think that would be fine. Okay, obviously less than perfect. Um, you can tell from the, his left eye, this side is a little bit wonky on the, the skin tie down, but but he is close, and, and they are the, the, the glue has slipped because instead of waiting for it to dry, I kind of just needed to move on. So, but okay, so there he is. Um, I'm going to take a quick little break to set up my computer um, and get that up and running so that we can attach him to the computer now, okay?